Power Tomex. Bellam sa visibil ya awam kare din na tunag bakpa toilet ka fresh wata bai Tomex. Tonight, rapid action. Several arrests of key figures in the Gota Gogama attacks, including MPs, carried out by the CID today. The wrong time. The TNA motion to express displeasure against the President gets defeated as the Prime Minister expresses his latest concerns. My worry is that as a result of this defeat, the main motion may not be taken up again because of the lack of numbers. First of many, Sri Lanka is set to enter default territory for the first time in its history tomorrow when it misses two key bond payments. Majority choice. The tussle for a new deputy speaker sees a win for the government's choice by 31 votes. All this and much more coming up tonight on First at Nine, this Tuesday, the 17th of May, 2022. Fair and lovely bends will allot number than grow and handsome. From Adha Verana, this is Adha Verana First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. And a very good evening to all of you joining us tonight on First at Nine, I'm Dave Diebert. In Parliament today, a motion tab tabled by Tamil National Alliance parliamentarian M.A. Sumandiran that sought to suspend standing orders and debate the motion of censure expressing displeasure over the President as a matter of urgency has been defeated by a parliamentary vote. Accordingly, 119 votes were against the motion debate and 68 votes were in favour. Following the defeat, M.P. Sumantaran accused the House of ignoring the calls of thousands of protesters who have taken to the streets to demand that the President steps down and warned that such a situation can only lead to the public resorting to other means to bring about change. The first parliamentary session to be held after the appointment of Ranil Vikram Singer as the new Prime Minister commenced this morning. Accordingly, heavy security was set in place today in and around the parliament environs. According to Sergeant at Arms Narendra Fernando, security had been beefed up due to intelligence warnings of a threat by a violent group. Meanwhile, the first order of the day was the observance of a minute silence for the late SLPP parliamentarian Amarakirti Atukorala, who was killed during a violent confrontation with protesters last week. Meanwhile, a proposal was tabled by Tamil National Alliance MP M.A. Sumandiran, calling for a suspension of standing orders in order to take up a motion expressing displeasure against the President. All that will happen is whether this parliament agrees with the large majority of the country or not. That's all that will that will happen. So I'm urging, while I propose this motion, I'm urging members of parliament not to block this discussion in parliament today. Because this is the discussion that is happening in the country today. And if this is a parliament that is a representative body of the country today, please allow this discussion to take place in the parliament. We don't have to shout at each other. We can discuss it and then decide whether as representatives of the people, we agree or don't agree with what is being said outside. The Yojana wa kidri pat kara sumandaran karo manti tuma he istir karon labwa lakshman kirel man tuma mokad the Yojana wa stavar niyoga titu and stavar niyoga titu bhi ma pille man dava apay kenge dava yak neti bawa halindo ba tuma te denondon na adu deep ti bunu pakshna ek sa kachar me Yojana wa vivade te kani ma stavar niyoga anu 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 kamne kalay ke akar e mokadi kela oba tuma te thirne kara ne pulo. ोगेगा 
ආණ්ඩුව වෙනුවෙන් විරුද්ධ වෙනවා තව යෝජනාවක් මේ අය ගෙන ආවා ඒකට දැන් මොකද කරන්නේ කියලාවත් කියන්නේ නැහැ අගමැතිතුමාට අයින් වෙන්න කියලා මහා උද්ඝෝෂණයක් කරලා පෙරලි කරලා ගෙන ආවා යෝජනාවක් ඒකත් න්‍යාය පත්‍රයේ තියෙනවා තාම අස් කරගෙන නැහැ මේ යෝජනාවට අපි එකඟ නැහැ ඒ නිසා ඡන්දයකට දාන්න අපි ඡන්දෙන් ඡන්දෙන් තීරණය කරමු Following this the motion to suspend parliament standing orders was taken to a vote and was subsequently defeated in parliament today by a majority of 51 votes a total of 119 lawmakers voted against the motion while 68 voted in favor thereby the motion expressing displeasure against the president will not be taken up for debate in the house as a matter of urgency speaking at the adjournment debate mp sumandiran addressed the public protests and the demands which he accused the government of ignoring my colleague Honorable Rasamanikam and I met you the other day in your official residence, Honorable Speaker, and when the emergency was declared. And when we came out, the press was there, and both of us made an appeal to everyone not to resort to violence, and more importantly, we said, "Don't destroy the institutions. We stand with you for the change that you desire." but those changes must happen within these institutions if these institutions are destroyed then it will only be anarchy that pre- that prevails in the country and that is not good for anyone we said we understand the frustration of the youth that there is so much delay that it takes so long but nevertheless there is no other way today is a good example of these delaying tactics almost for 40 days people have been camped on the road saying go to go home but those who call themselves people's representatives who come and sit here are deaf they cannot hear that they can't even agree to take up for discussion for debate a matter that people have been shouting from the streets this is unprecedented in this country unprecedented this has never happened in this country before for over a month not just in one place but in several places surely the people's representatives if we dare call ourselves that must be prepared to discuss it here why block that what's the fear why can't we discuss it that shows that shows that this parliament also has lost its legitimacy Not only has the president lost his legitimacy, this parliament also has lost his legitimacy. Parliament must be dissolved. But again, that will be put to vote here, and MPs who are holding on to their positions will vote against that motion to dissolve parliament. And they think that that way they can carry on. No, they cannot. They are pushing the people of this country to seek other remedies. That is the danger. That is the danger of not giving. the voice of the people and expression here that this danger you don't seem to understand this parliament is not giving ear to what the people are saying meanwhile prime minister ranil vikram singh has responded to criticism of the government's vote against the tna motion explaining that he had advised against the tabling of the motion today when the house was occupied with debating other matters He added that he had advised TNA MP M A Sumandiran against the move today because the risk of defeat could jeopardize any further motions against the president in the future due to a lack of numbers. Yesterday Mr Sumandiran met me and uh, proposed that the standing orders be suspended in parliament to enable the motion of displeasure against the president to be Uh, debated it was not a motion to remove him it was not a motion in any way of no confidence it was just a motion of displeasure so i was of the view that it should not be done today since the members of parliament had requested that tuesday be set aside to discuss the attacks on the houses the death of one mp and the injuries caused to another member of parliament and i said that should be done uh, we have only got to discuss in addition to it the progress of the inquiries on the attack on gotago uh, gamma i also pointed out if this resolution fails then it will also affect the main resolution of displeasure on the president unfortunately today the opposition had decided to move this resolution in the meantime the members of parliament said quite correctly that priority must be given to their issues and this matter could be discussed later because they pressed ahead with it the motion 
was defeated. My worry is that as a result of this defeat, the main motion may not be taken up again because of the lack of numbers. In the meantime, Sri Lanka Padujana Paramana MP Ajit Rajapaksa was voted in as the new Deputy Speaker of Parliament in a secret ballot that took place in the House today. Rajapaksa obtained 109 votes in total and gained the majority of 31 votes as MP Rohini Kumar Vijayaratna, the main opposition Samagi Janabala Vegas nominee, secured 78 votes. Last week, Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh called on both the government and the opposition to nominate a female parliamentarian to fill the vacant post of Deputy Speaker following the resignation of former Deputy Speaker Ranjit Simbalapitiya. Accordingly, the main opposition Samagi Jan Balavegya chose to name MP Rohini Kumari Vijayaratna as their candidate. However, the government benches chose to ignore the PM's request and instead nominated SLPP MP Ajit Rajapaksa. With that, when Parliament convened today, a secret ballot was held to choose between the two candidates. The results were unanimous with the SLPP candidate Ajit Rajapaksa receiving 109 votes in total, giving him a 31-vote majority of the opposition's candidate, who received 78 votes. A further 23 votes were rejected in the process. It was revealed that the rejected votes included those of former President Maitri Palasirisena and former ministers Vimal Veeravansa and Udaya Gamanpilla, who had stated that they would intentionally spoil their votes, citing the process as being a waste of Parliament's time. Further, independent MP Vimal Veeravansa had opposed the holding of a secret vote that a cost of approximately 9 million rupees would be spent on the process. He had instead called for an agreement to be reached without opting for the secret ballot process. Following his appointment, Deputy Speaker Rajapaksa apologised for the time spent on his election and called for unity in Parliament. Now, two parliamentary correspondents have accused government MPs D. Veerasinghe and Indika Anuruddha of accosting them and stealing their mobile phones while they were in the process of carrying out their duties today. The two journalists were in the process of recording the exits of government MPs after a parliamentary group meeting where they were allegedly confronted and their phones were seized by the MPs who took offence to being recorded. In response, opposition leader Sajid Premdasa has called on the Prime Minister, the Speaker and the Leader of the House to take immediate steps to, investi to investigate and return their property. The mobile phones belonging to two journalists have reportedly been forcibly taken away from them inside the Parliament complex today. The other Dirana correspondent stated that the mobile phones of journalists Pragit Pereira and Kasun Samaravira have been taken away in this manner. It is reported that as MPs were leaving following a meeting of the parliamentary group of the ruling party, the journalists in question had been engaged in recording the event using their mobile phones. The journalists alleged that parliamentarians D. Veera Singh and Indikan Rudde had forcibly taken away their phones at that moment. They added that Professor Channa Jayasumana had also reprimanded them over the incident. It is further reported that the two journalists had subsequently left the parliament premises and that their mobile phones are yet to be returned to them. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, meanwhile, took up the issues with the speaker today, urging him to ensure the return of the journalists' private property. <laughs> अदर दिन ये इतुमान लासा तो दूर कतना देखा मैं पहरा आरक्षण थी बनवा विशेष में मटर आरंचुनु आकार ऐट आंडु पक्षे मंत्री कंडा एम रस्सी एम पशुव इन पिटतर तक पहले नवस्ता वेदी मामा क्या मत इन्हें नंग नंग गंग किया ना because I don't want to impute intentions to anybody like a standing order सर थी बने निशा इनिशा विशेष में अब तुम आगे अवधारणे यूँ करना वा एक ने प्रगीत परेरा में तुम आगे दूर कथन है इसा अब तुम आगे दिहत तला करुणा करला ये दे इष्ट करने ये वगे में अभी आवृत करेगा ना तो ना जनमाद्य निदहस एक प्रजातंत्रवादी क्रमवेदे हतरवेनी कुलुन जनमाद्य एक वर्तमान अग्रामाते तुमत आवृत करेगे ना तिबेनो तुमत हमदाम अभी दानव विदेट निदहस जनमाद्य विन्विन पेनी हिटपु पुद्गले इन्हीं सारे विशेषण में हम अस्तावे उबतुम आगे नोट गरु अग्रामाते तुम आगे नोट गरु सभाना and we'll be back with more stories right after this short break. Do stay with us. Big Three. Welcome back. 
Now, Sri Lanka is set to officially slide into default territory when it misses two bond interest payments tomorrow. This would be the first time in the country's history that it misses its debt repayments. Sri Lanka is set to default on two unpaid foreign bonds after their 30-day grace periods end tomorrow, Bloomberg reports. With that, Sri Lanka will officially join the list of countries that have defaulted on foreign bond payments, the island's first in its history. The government announced last month that it would stop paying back foreign debts to preserve cash for fuel and food imports. Speaking to Bloomberg money manager at Vontable Asset Management in Zurich, Carlos de Souza said that without an agreement, this will count as a formal default. He added that legally this would matter, but for markets, Sri Lanka is already de facto in default, so the price effect of such an event is probably not going to be significant. Yesterday, Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singer announced plans to sell the country's national carrier and pledged to announce a new relief budget. Also, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka is set to announce its monetary policy review on Thursday. While a default is widely expected by investors, it has important implications, says Bloomberg, citing cross-default clauses in most Sri Lankan bond agreements that drag all outstanding dollar debt into default if there's a missed payment in a single bond. On the debt due in 2023 and 2028, the clause is triggered if any payment that exceeds $25 million is not met. Following the directive issued by the AG's department to arrest 30, 22 suspects with regard to the attack on protesters near Temple Trees and Golf Face on the 9th of May, if sufficient evidence is against them, the CID arrested parliamentarians Sanat Nishanta and Milan Jayatilaka today. Further, former counsel of the Western Provincial, Provincial Council, Amal Silva, and an employee of the Devila Mount Lavinia Municipal Council were also arrested in relation to the incidents as well. More than a week has passed since the brutal assault was carried out by the supporters of Sri Lanka Pozjana Perimuna on the peaceful protesters at Temple Trees and Golface Green. Following this incident, the Criminal Investigation Department was instructed to launch an investigation that has been called by several factions including the Bar Association and the protesters as well. With that, statements have been recorded from police personnel present at the sites and those injured as well. So far, investigations have revealed that the organisers of the meeting at Temple Trees had planned to march towards the President's house in Fort afterwards. The police, however, had informed them to avoid the Golface route and instead use an alternate route through Slave Island. The reports say that despite an initial agreement by the CELPP supporters, they had then proceeded to attack the protest site outside Temple Trees instead and then force their way towards Golface Green. This was when they perpetrated the attack on the peaceful protesters at the Gota Go Home site. Sources add that although police personnel were preparing to fire tear gas in order to prevent them from moving towards Golface Green, a senior police officer as well as a senior official from the Ministry of Public Security had ordered them not to do so. Meanwhile yesterday, the Attorney General's Department directed the Criminal Investigation Department to arrest a total of 22 suspects if sufficient evidence is available against in connection with the incidents. The suspects include parliamentarians Johnston Fernando, Sanat Nishanta, Milan Jayatilaka, Sanjeeva Edirimana, as well as senior DIG in charge of the Western Province, Deshabandhu Tennakon. The names also include Mayor of Moratua Samanlal Fernando and former member of the Western Provincial Council, Amal Silva, as well. Some of the parliamentarians' names were seen in social media footage conversing with senior police personnel before the attacks took place last Monday. In a letter sent to the CID, the AG's department has called for cases to be filed against all arrested suspects under the criminal code. The letter states that if the suspects are not found at their known addresses, they must present evidence and obtain an open warrant from a magistrate to arrest them or even seek public assistance to arrest any suspects who are not found at such designated addresses. Accordingly today, SLPP parliamentarian Sanat Nishanta was arrested on his way back from parliamentary sittings. MP Milan Jayatilaka was also arrested by the CID as well. In addition, Western Provincial Councillor Amal Silva and an employee of the Dehivala Mount Lavinia Municipal Council were arrested. After producing Silva and the Municipal Council employee before the Fort Magistrate, the suspects were remanded until tomorrow. In the meantime, the CID has informed Speaker Mahindi Apa Abevardhana that statements need to be recorded from seven MPs, including Namal Rajapaksha, Pavitra Vanyarachi, Johnston Fernando, Indikan Ruddha, C.B. Ratnayaka, Sanjeev Edirmana, and Rohit Abegunavardhana. Meanwhile, the police have requested public assistance to locate three suspects involved in setting fire to a bus and damaging property during the protest near the official residence of President Gotabe Rajapaksha in Mirihana. 
After releasing their photographs to the media, the police have called on the public to provide any information on the suspects using the hotline 0718594922, 0112441379 and 0112422. Now, Litro Gas Sri Lanka Limited has made payments for two LP gas shipments today and will begin unloading a 2,800 metric ton shipment uh, to, tonight. Its chairman Vijay Dahirat said that 80,000 cylinders will be released to the market daily starting from tomorrow. In the meantime, the fuel situation in the country seems to be only getting worse as people take to the streets and block off roads demanding fuel. The Ceylon Petroleum Corporation has requested the public not to queue for petrol tomorrow unless absolutely essential as supplies will be limited and adding that added that the normal distribution will resume from Thursday the 19th of May. For weeks, consumers have been piling up near Litro gas outlets to secure domestic gas cylinders. The lack of foreign reserves has made it literally impossible for Litro to clear LPG shipments anchored in Sri Lankan waters and as a result, the available stocks have been used to fill only 37.5 kg cylinders for industrial and commercial usage. However, today, the company announced that they were able to make payments for two LPG shipments. From the two shipments, unloading is expected to begin from a 2,800 metric ton LPG shipment currently anchored in Sri Lankan waters, while the other shipment will be arriving in Sri Lanka tomorrow. According to Litro Chairman Vijita Herat, 80,000 gas cylinders will be released to the market daily from tomorrow, the 18th of May. On the country's fuel situation, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe revealed yesterday that the country has only enough petrol to meet a single day's demand. The next petrol shipments under the Indian credit line will arrive Sri Lanka tomorrow and on the 29th. Until then, people continue to pile up near refueling stations despite an appeal by Minister of Power and Energy Kanchan Vijay Sekara not to do so. Queues, now even larger than earlier, were witnessed during the day as well. Meanwhile, what Prime Minister Vikramasinghe said yesterday was that US dollars will be sourced from the open market to clear a 37,000 metric ton petrol shipment anchored in Sri Lankan seas for over 40 days. Diesel, however, is available for the next few days with the arrival of a 40,000 metric ton diesel shipment on Sunday. As a result, private buses recommence transportation during the day. The next diesel shipment is expected to arrive day after tomorrow and on the 1st of June. However, due to the unavailability of fuel in several areas, the public again took to the streets to demonstrate and demand fuel. One such protest worked off today in Koralima, blocking the 120 bus route. <laughs> Further, another demonstration was held in Bandaragama as well. <laughs> Anti-government demonstrations held at Golf is Green continued for their 39th consecutive day, calling on the president to resign. Meanwhile, a protest was also held demanding the arrest of former Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa and parliamentarians such as Johnston Fernando over the violence that occurred on the 9th of May at Temple Trees and Golfes Green. The anti-government protest near the presidential secretariat at Golfes marked its 39th consecutive day today. The protest, which began on the 9th of April, continues to attract more crowds, showing that their calls against the government won't be silenced very easily. The demonstrations continued during the day despite heavy rains. With today marking 10 years since the death of former Sri Lankan rugby player Wasim Tajuddin, a group of protesters engaged in a protest march demanding justice for the late rugby player. The march that began from Kolpiti entered the Golf Face Green protest site this evening. Further, protests also worked off, urging the government to arrest former Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha and parliamentarians including Johnston Fernando. Meanwhile, last night at the Gota Gogama site, several programs were held to celebrate Vesak Poya. Now, the Department of Meteorology expects more showers during the next few days as the southwest monsoon gradually establishes over the island. Meanwhile, heavy showers have resulted in an increase in the water levels in reservoirs. Showery conditions at the moment have enhanced as the southwest monsoons have started to establish gradually in the island. What the Department of Meteorology says is that heavy showery conditions will continue and 100 mm of rainfall can be expected during the next few days. With that, several spells of showers are expected to occur in the northern province as well as in Anuradhapura district. 
Strong winds of around 40 to 50 kilometers per hour are expected at times over the western slopes of the central hills, northern, north central, and northwestern provinces, and in the Hambantota and Trincomalee districts. Meanwhile, during the past 24 hours, the highest rainfall was recorded from the area of Moraliowe in the Kegal district with 49.6 millimeters. Further, several areas were seen flooded during the day as a result of the heavy deluge. Due to the heavy rainfall in the Gaul district, the Ginganga spilled over from the area of Badegama, flooding the Badegama Nagara Road and the Ganegama area along the Badegama Dolangoda Road. Meanwhile, in the Kalathara district, the areas of Galpata, Anguruvathota, Bulat Singhala, Yatavara, Tebuana, and Nambapana were flooded due to the rise in water levels of the Kaluganga. However, the good news is that the heavy rainfall has increased the water levels in reservoirs, generating hydroelectricity. As a result, 53.71% of the electricity requirement in the country right now is fulfilled from hydroelectricity. In the meantime, the National Building Research Organization has extended landslide warnings issued to several areas in the districts of Ratnapura, Kaluthara, Kegal, Kandy and Nuorelia. Welcome back. Now, the stock market showed some signs of recovery with strong performances bringing the indices into the green today. The all share price index rose by 359.24 points to end at 8,457.65. Meanwhile, the SP SL20 index of more liquid stocks also ended stronger at 2,809.81 points, following a 147.5 point gain. Share volumes at the end of trading stood at 177 million rupees, while turnover, while turnover was 2.7 billion rupees. The transportation sector was the highest contributor to turnover, while the food and beverage sector was the second highest. Mean, meanwhile, foreign purchases during the day amounted to 74 million rupees, while foreign sales stood at 129 million. Foreign participation in the market activity remained at subdued levels, with foreigners closing as net sellers. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. We hope you join us again tomorrow at the same time. Good night.